recently I went online and if the the learning channel has this uh, you can submit proposals for reality shows so many of us turn to reality TV uh, I, I think uh, we look for uh, substantive programming uh, in avoidance of our naiveness uh, I think this is true in appearance but not in fact I think for the future may still be hideous uh, by hideous I mean ugly uh, not the way we plan it uh, since a lot of us have a tendency of being able to remedy uh, the, our problems uh, only by aggravating them so that each day is much more tolerable before the solution is found to the difficulty of that particular moment. So for you to clearly envision the reality program I propose to the Learning Channel, I uh, I, and the learning channel is TLC, so if t the people at TLC, if they're watching, I'm not crazy. I'm just, you know, sharing. Sharing is caring. Uh, I highly recommend two books. The, the first book is a book titled The Righteous Mind, Why Good People Are Divided by Politics and Religion by uh, NYU professor Jonathan Haidt. And Sapiens, a uh, brief history of humankind by my boy, Yuval Noah Harari. Don't know Yuval Noah Harari, but I feel his vibe. He's big into meditating. I eat all that stuff up. He does the, he goes on yoga meditations for like two, two months. And these two guys are perfect to contrast the reality show, the idea of my reality show. So height is like daylight and Harari is like Darkness. These two guys, these two men, have neither the same method nor the same morality. Uh, the righteous mind encourages you to watch yourself. Sapiens encourages you to speak out regardless of who you make uncomfortable. These salutary or awkward consequences matter little to those who question themselves and are comfortable with bringing light to uncomfortable truths. Hence, some of us meditate upon the bad luck of being born without concern for the harm we cause others or ourselves. Ask yourself, do you think Americans are grown up enough and ready to process the intoxication of harmful truths? Are we? I mean, is, is, is America ready? I think from my, from my reading and reading uh, the Righteous Mind, I think Jonathan Hyatt doesn't think so. He, Hyatt is an American social psychologist. He's a professor of ethical le leadership at the university, at NYU, the University of New York, the Stern School of Business. In his book, The Righteous Mind, he describes his transformation from a liberal to an intellectual. Hyatt takes the high road with regards to religion and correctly points out the effective utility the role of religion has has played throughout history. So there's, you know, even though we're, we're, we're uh, in the age of enlightenment, before the age of enlightenment, religion had its place and, and how, how we coped and how we filled our days, uh, the, 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 the being, being a believer or the strength of religion saved a good role throughout history. Um, the example that Hyatt uses is this metaphor that he talks about the elephant and the rider. He says that our emotional side is the elephant and our rational side is the rider. Perched atop of the elephant, the rider holds the rein and seems to be the leader. But the rider control is precarious because the rider is so small relative to the elephant since it is not reason who guides life but custom. So with, with, this is old. This is an old beef. Different philosophers. We just changed the label. So is Descartes and David Hume. So David Hume was more he he's famously said be a man be a philosopher but a, but above all be a man and Descartes was the one that says I think therefore I am so this is the same the same thing so height sides with with Humes along the lines of yes we're rational 
but we're also emotional beings. But we, the, the, the emotional part of us is the big, big elephant. Now, you are Noah, you are Yuval Noah Harari, he's less optimistic. Harari received his PhD from the University of Oxford in 2002, and he's currently a lecturer at the Department of History at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In his book, uh, he sold over 20 million copies worldwide. Harari believes the objective things exist independent of human consciousness, like radioactivity. Subjective things exist solely in our imagination, like a child's imaginary friend, religion, money, corporations. The inner subjective is something that exists within the communication network linking the subjective consciousness of many individuals. If a, if a single uh, individual changes his or her belief or even dies is of little importance. However, if most individuals in the network die or change their belief, the inner subjective phenomenon will mutate or disappear. So that that's just bombs like we that's why when we look at history history has limitations because we have only but so much written history there's been throughout history how many civilizations don't we know about and that for whatever reason there, there may have been a genocide that wasn't recorded they may have been whatever craziness they've been you know whatever that is so these are things that happened that did happen but because either records weren't kept and they all vanished, no one knows of. Whereas if one or two people would have vanished, no one cared. And, and those stories would have continued and would have merged with other stories. So that's what I got. I give you that. And, and that's, that's something that I'm pushing on, trying to do the reality thing. This is something that I put together. I wrote the proposal. No one's gotten back to me yet. Uh, give me an A for effort, but you know, these are things for you to think about. Uh, I'm, I'm going to elaborate more on the next video, what it is that I'm trying to do with the reality show. Stay tuned. Thank you.